Good morning and welcome to Silver Birch Evangelical Church online this morning. This is a special day for us at Silver Birch. Um, we have a commissioning service this evening at 6.30 uh, via Zoom and there will be details, uh, more details about that at the end. Peter and Debbie, uh, whom we have known and grown to love over the years, are now going as missionaries to Moldova. So if you're available tonight, uh, there will be more information at the end of the, at the, end of the service uh, to allow you to know how to connect in to that this evening. When Rosemary and I lived in the United States, we would often travel home um, and often with the children uh, when the children came along. It turned out to be quite an arduous journey, as these journeys are, especially with young children and uh, they were times when you, you'd get really anxious and, and it would seem to be forever and we always seemed to hit certain problems on the way home which, which uh, often made it that much more difficult. But when we arrived in Belfast International Airport, uh, our, our, you know, you begin to get your second wind as it were and um, we would go through customs and through immigration and then we go to the to the baggage and then obviously our baggage was always the last or it seemed to be the last and sometimes it didn't even show up but then once you had got your baggage and the children and we would make our way out into the concourse there we would see uh, Rosemary's father and my father standing smiling ear to ear uh, welcoming us uh, with open arms back into the family and the family was reunited and there was much joy and the wonderful memories uh, when of those days um, seems so long ago now in Psalm 42 and in Psalm 43 the psalmist asks himself uh, the question why are you downcast O oh, my soul, and why are you so uneasy within me? I think we can all relate to that. Sometimes when we talk to ourselves, we go, I shouldn't feel as nervous. I shouldn't feel as anxious. I shouldn't feel as downcast and sad as I do. Uh, on the journey, we often feel that. And we can all relate to that experience. However, the psalmist in, in Psalm 43 and verse 3 and 4 says this, Send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy mountain and to the place where you dwell. Then I will go to the altar of God. To God, my greatest joy, I will praise you with the harp, O oh God, my God. When we're in the midst of the journey, we can get downhearted, anxious. But we need to continually be reminding ourselves of what's waiting at the final destination for us. Today, Sammy Gibson is going to continue his uh, uh, look at the conversations in John chapter 14 with the disciples where Jesus is having a conversation with his disciples. We've titled this one A Conversation to Assure and I be believe this passage is provides a lot of assurance for, for his disciples at the time but for you and me today uh, in Bangor or wherever you are. So we hope that you enjoy listening. Let's just open with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you this morning, just as the psalmist did, for you to send out your light and your truth. Let them lead us today. Let them bring us to where you dwell then we will go to the altar of God, 
to you who are our greatest joy. And there we will give you praise. Amen. Bless the Lord of my soul, oh my soul, watch ye peaceful in sing like never before, oh my soul.
This morning's reading is taken from John 14, verses 15 to 31. If you love me, obey my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate, who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit, who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him, because it isn't looking for him, and doesn't recognise him. But you know him, because he lives with you now, and later will be in you. No, I will not abandon you as orphans, I will come to you. Soon the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Since I live, you also will live. When I am raised to life again, you will know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Those who accept my commandments and love me are the one, uh, and obey me are the ones who love me. And because they love me, my Father will love them, and I will love them, and reveal myself to them. Judas, not Judas Iscariot, but the other disciple with that name, said to him, Lord, why are you going to reveal yourself only to us and not to the world at large? Jesus replied, All who love me will do what I say. My Father will love them, and we will come and make our home with each of them. Anyone who doesn't love me will not obey me. And remember, my words are not my own. What I am telling you is from the Father who sent me. I am telling you these things now, while I am still with you. But when the Father sends the Advocate as my representative, that is, the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I have told you. I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart, and the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. Remember what I told you. I'm going away, but I will come back to you again. If you really love me, you'd be happy that I'm going to the Father who is greater than I am. I've told you these things before they happen so that when they do happen, you will believe. I don't have much more time to talk to you because the ruler of this world approaches. He has no power over me, but I will do what the Father requires of me, so that the world will know that I love the Father. Come, let's be going. Hi there. Yes, it's me again. Um, and we're looking today at John chapter 14. Uh, again, we began last week with the first half of the chapter, but we are in this conversation that the Lord Jesus Christ is having with his disciples in the upper room just before he uh, goes to Calvary and he is um, sharing with them uh, what he knows about what's about to happen to him before it happens, his uh, betrayal, uh, the denial of Peter, the uh, arrest and the crucifixion and, and the resurrection and he's sharing all this before it all, all happens to reassure them that uh, he's in control and he knows exactly what's what's happening and to prepare them for what's a, a, ahead of time. And here in chapter 14, um, what is I find really interesting is, is that we look at the Lord Jesus Christ uh, showing the disciples, showing all his followers uh, what it means to follow him. Um, Many of us, and certainly I have over the years, been encouraged to join certain clubs. You know, it could be uh, for shopping, um, it could be for traveling, for hotels or for airplanes to get into the lounge or to get special privileges. It could be a sports club. And I'm sure over the years, uh, and indeed maybe even now, some of you might even be in the Rotary Club, which is a very uh, a, a elite club. And uh, there are all kinds of uh, even social clubs that people join and usually attached to these clubs there are benefits you, know, you either get a price reduction or you get uh, points that you can add up or or you get access to a, a restaurant at special prices my brother ha he's, a, he's a member of a, a local golf club and sometimes he gets us uh, with the whole family he gets us in to the restaurant to uh, with a special price uh, to, to, to be seated together and so most clubs in fact nearly all of them have privileges uh, attached to them and some are very elite indeed uh, we hear about them and read 
about them in, in newspapers where rich people even get together and uh, you have to have a certain amount of money before you'll even be entertained, you know, in some of these clubs in places like Monte Carlo and so on. But in John chapter 14, you could say the Lord Jesus Christ is showing the disciples and showing all of us um, the privileges uh, and the benefits of being a member of God's club, uh, of being a member of his family. And at the beginning of the chapter, we saw last week he was reassuring them uh, that in troubled times, don't let your hearts be troubled when you're anxious. You know, don't let your hearts be troubled. I have a plan. Um, I have a place for you in heaven. Uh, I, I'm going to prepare it. And then he goes on to reassure them that um, he is the way and the truth and the life. If it's through him. It's through a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ that you enter this club. Uh, he is the way, the truth and the life. And no one can come to God the Father except through Jesus. And then he goes on to show um, Philip who asked the question, where is the Father? Show us the Father. He says to Philip, well, you're looking at him. That's why I came. And so Jesus came to earth to reveal to us and to open up the way to God the Father. And in the second part of chapter 14, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, verse 13, begins with, again, what is essential to Christianity. Uh, because God is love, it's really all about love. And love has to be at the centre of Christianity. He encourages the, 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 the disciples uh, earlier in the conversation to love one another. Uh, and that way the world would recognise that they're his disciples. Because God is love and because Jesus Christ loves us and gave himself for us. Um, we should persevere and continue in this same love. And he goes on to say that if if you do, um, if you persevere in this love, he says, uh, I will ask the Father and the Father will give you uh, the advocate or, or the comforter. Or the, uh, he's talking here about the Holy Spirit. And he's saying that when I go away, I will I will tell the Father to send, I will ask the Father to send you the Holy Spirit so that you're not alone and you'll never be alone. And he goes on to say that the, the Holy Spirit, the advocate, he uses the word advocate, which is a, you know, a, a word used for people who defend people. And I suppose the idea there is that if anyone starts to accuse, especially Satan starts to accuse Christians before the throne of God or, of their imperfections and their sins and you know points the finger at our lives which he can easily do uh, the holy spirit the advocate can can, can also uh, step in he can uh, you know in the person of the lord jesus christ uh, and and defend us and so the lord says that when i go away um, i will send the holy spirit who will lead you into all truth and so here we have some of the privileges a great privilege when you become a christian uh, is, for, you know, first of all, you know that the Lord Jesus Christ has died on the cross for you um, and that he will forgive those who ask. Um, he will give eternal life uh, to those who believe in him. Uh, he goes on to remind us that if you are in Christ, then you're in the love of God. You will experience God's love. And here he adds to that by saying that God will send his Holy Spirit uh, to to be with you and indeed he goes on to say not only will he be with you but he will dwell within you and so you will get the gift of the Holy Spirit uh, it's a wonderful gift that every Christian uh, who believes in the Lord Jesus Christ receives we read in the book of Romans chapter 8 and, and, and verse 9 that you can't be a Christian unless you have the Holy Spirit uh, it doesn't make sense and you'll see why further down uh, we, we find in, in the chapter, the, in verse 18, the Lord Jesus Christ says uh, that he will not leave you to, he'll not abandon you as orphans. He'll not abandon us, but he will come to you. So not only will the Holy Spirit come and indwell you, but the Lord Jesus Christ himself will come to us and dwell in us. How does he do that? Well, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ. Uh, as Jesus and God, the Father, are one they are one with the Spirit. And so you have this trinity, you have this triune relationship between the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. And 
I believe the Christian God is, is, is the greatest of all gods. Uh, in fact, I believe other gods are not gods at all. And the, the amazing thing about the Christian God is that he's a relational God. Uh, he, he had a relationship with the, between the Father and the Son uh, before the world was created. And there's a relationship between the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, an interdependence. There are three distinct persons, and yet uh, they are one. We, we find that a struggle to, to get our head around that. But, you know, another side to that is if you could get your head around God, would he be God? Uh, if you could understand everything there is to understand about who God is uh, and what he can do, um, could we in our little brains really contain it? So in a sense here, the Lord Jesus Christ is showing us, he's revealing to us the triune God. There's the Son uh, and the Son is at one with the Father. And then the Son's about to leave this earth and leave the disciples and he, and he asks the Father to send the Holy Spirit. And in this triune relationship, there's perfection, there's love, there's creativity, there's constant communication, there's trust. And it's almost like a family. Well, it is a family. And the Lord Jesus Christ is saying to the disciples, we are opening this triune family. We were opening this family and we are now embracing you and all those who will believe in God and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ also. That is an astonishing thing to, to grasp, that God would open his arms, that the Trinity would open the, 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 their arms to embrace you and me into this family where there is perfection, where there's no sin uh, and no darkness. And God wants you and me to be a part of this family. The Lord Jesus says in verse 18, I will not leave you orphans. You have a family. There's a place for you in the Father's house. Uh, the Holy Spirit, as he is with Jesus constantly, he does not receive the Holy Spirit in part or by measure. Um, the Bible says, and, and he's prepared to uh, ask the Father to, to to give us the Holy Spirit also. So what a, what a wonderful privilege of being a member of this uh, very elite club uh, of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. It's quite astonishing when you think about the truths of this. And, and not only that, you, as you read down, the Lord re-emphasizes the presence of the Father in, in our lives. And um, he, he, he says in verse uh, 21, uh, those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. And because they love me, my Father will love them. Um, later on, he will say, later on in the conversation, he will say, just as the Father loves me, he loves you. And again, that is an astonishing statement. What a privilege it is for Christians, those who trust and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, to become um, adopted into his family. And on top of that, receive the gift of the Holy Spirit uh, and also be loved by God the Father just as much as he loves his own, his very own son. Um, we are so blessed and we are so privileged. What a great um, condition, what, what, what a great privilege or benefit of this uh, club membership. Being a member of what you could say, uh, God's, uh, God's uh, uh, amazing club. Uh, the, the amazing thing about this is, and, and you might be a little, be a little bit suspicious of this, especially these days, because many of these club memberships that I was talking about earlier um, offer free membership. And you and I both know, I mean, I get emails, you get emails about, um, you know, joining a certain club uh, and the membership is free. And we know by now that um, it's not free because um, uh, if there's a price to pay, you're the price. People want to gather your data and they want to uh, use what they learn about you for commercial uh, benefit uh, for them and for their company. Um, the good news about this club we're talking about, God's Club, is that um, he doesn't need to gather your personal data. It is free from the point of view the Lord Jesus Christ paid the membership by dying on the cross for our sins. 
Um, although there is a cost for you and me involved because the cost is to give our life, give up our ambitions and our plans and, 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 and uh, give our lives to God. It's an exchange, you could say, and that uh, God says, uh, if you die to yourself and you follow me, then I will give you my life. So it's an exchange of lives, your life for God's life, which I think is a pretty good deal. It's a pretty good condition of, uh, or benefit of the membership where you get the gift of the Holy Spirit and you get uh, subsequently the gift of eternal life because God's Spirit is eternal uh, also. Um, he knows all about us. He doesn't need our data. He knows more about you and me and our hearts and our minds and, and, and our physical being uh, and, and how we are created and our personalities and uh, our characters than anybody else in this whole world. He knows exactly what we're like because he made us and yet he still loves us and he wants us to be a member of his family. Uh, the invitation is there. It, the membership is free. He has paid the price for it. And the benefits are literally out of this world. Uh, a place in heaven, sins forgiven, a guilty conscience uh, cleared, uh, the grace of God with us each day, the love of God and the presence of God, uh, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, who will never leave us, Jesus says in this chapter. I will not, you know, you'll not be orphans, I will not leave you. The Holy Spirit, when the Father gives you the advocate or the counsellor or the comforter, he will never leave you. So you'll never be alone uh, when you become a member of God's family. He even goes further than this, further down the chapter. He actually says in verse 27, he says, I'm leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. We talked a little bit about this last time uh, in the earlier part of the chapter where Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled. But while here again, he's saying, I am giving you the gift. When, when you have the presence of God in your life, he can give you peace of mind and heart. And a pe the peace that I give you, the world can't give it to you, he says in verse 27. You'll not be able to buy this anywhere. There's no club on earth that you can join that will give you peace of mind and peace of heart like God's family does and God's presence in your life. No wonder the psalmist could say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leads me beside still waters and he, he takes me into green pastures. You know, you know the psalm well. Um, it's because the psalmist discovered the presence of God in his life brings great benefits, not just for eternity, but for today, for, for, for the challenges of life, strength for today and hope for tomorrow. And the Lord Jesus Christ says, I will, I'm going to give you a gift, the peace of mind and heart, a peace that I give, uh, the peace that I give, the world cannot give you. So don't be troubled or afraid. Remember what I told you uh, when I've, I'm going away, but I will be back again. And he has told, told them all these things before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe. Um, and, and time is now getting short, he said, uh, and I'm going to have to leave you soon. Um, there is an enemy you need to be aware of, he says, the ruler of this world is, is nearby, but he has no power over me. And he's talking about Satan, he's talking about the devil. And here in this part of the conversation, it's quite interesting that the Lord Jesus Christ brings into the conver conversation great spirit beings. You know, he, he's talking about the Holy Spirit, the all-powerful uh, Holy Spirit of God and of Christ. Uh, but he's also reminding us that there is another spirit being a, a, a fallen angel called Lucifer. And Jesus calls him the God of this world because uh, many in this world today uh, are under the influence as Judas uh, was at this very time to betray the Lord Jesus Christ. Many in our world today uh, who don't choose to follow God are, are, are at the mercy of this other powerful influence uh, in the world today. And that's why Jesus calls him the God of this world. Elsewhere, it says the God of this world has blinded the eyes of those that reject the gospel so that they don't see. But it's the, the God of this world is not 
too powerful for the Lord Jesus Christ. He has no power over the Lord Jesus Christ. He has no power over the Holy Spirit. And we see a lot about the Holy Spirit in this chapter. The, the, the greatest of the, the spiritual um, uh, beings that's mentioned here. And we see that, first of all, Jesus talks about the Holy Spirit as a person. He will come, it says uh, in verse 17. It says that he's an advocate, he's a comforter, he's a counsellor. Only a person can do that, not just not an influence. Some people think the Holy Spirit's an influence. No, no, no. Holy Spirit is a person, third person of the Trinity, co-equal with the Father uh, and the Son. And he will guide, he will lead, um, he will be with you, and not just with you. Uh, he says in verse 18, he will actually dwell within you, and you will be indwent, indwelt by the Holy Spirit and uh, he, when he dwells within us, the influence that he has in our world is that he represents Jesus. The Holy Spirit, if you want to know if someone's full of the Holy Spirit, they'll talk, they'll talk about the Lord Jesus Christ. They'll, they'll, they'll lift up the Lord Jesus Christ because that's what the Holy Spirit has come to do. He, he's come to teach and to remind and to guide us. Um, he doesn't rob us of our personality, of our characters, because he made us that way. But what he does is he comes alongside us as a comforter and as a guide. Some years ago I heard a story about a, a man who had joined a gliding club to learn how to uh, pilot one of these uh, glider planes. And uh, he was up in the, the plane learning, getting one of his lessons with the instructor. And uh, the instructor was uh, in the back seat and he was in the front seat. And the instructor had a heart attack and died. And he, there he was, literally left hanging. Uh, and, and he panicked because he hadn't quite learned how to, to guide the plane. And what they did was, what the club did was, they sent up another pilot in another plane who came alongside and guided him. Gu guided him how to, 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 to pilot the plane and how to land the plane. And in a sense, the Lord Jesus Christ is saying, when I go away, when I ascend into heaven, the Holy Spirit will come and he will comfort you he will be your advocate, he will be your counsellor, he will guide you, he'll teach you in the, all truth. And what a great benefit it is to be a member of God's family, this exclusive club that is open to everyone. And the admission is free because the Lord Jesus Christ paid the price. May God bless you and encourage you in your own heart as we listen in on these conversations that the Lord Jesus Christ had with his disciples. A great um, follow-up to this uh, is Romans chapter 5. If you read Romans chapter 5, you'll see the Apostle Paul, he got it. Uh, Romans chapter 5 uh, is, is Paul's uh, I can understanding, really, of what the Lord Jesus Christ is talking about here in John 14. May God bless you and help you on your life's journey. Amen. stars they wept the morning sun was dead the savior of the world was fallen his body on the cross his blood poured out for us the weight of every curse upon
we sing hallelujah the lamb has overcome we sing hallelujah we sing hallelujah we sing hallelujah the lamb has overcome Thank you, Sammy, for those encouraging words. Jesus' conversation assures his followers, doesn't it, that they have been adopted into his family and that they are not alone because he has sent his Holy Spirit to indwell them and to those who believe. Jesus' conversation assures his followers that we're adopted into his family and that we are not alone in this world because he has sent his Holy Spirit to indwell us uh, and uh, not only indwell those disciples, but also to indwell all of those who believe in him. He also told them that the Holy Spirit will teach them all things and that he would bring to their remembrance all that Jesus had said and done. And as those of us who love the Lord Jesus and who want to follow him and to obey his commands, this morning we have the opportunity to remember him in the communion, in the breaking of bread and the taking of wine in our own homes at this time. And hopefully the Holy Spirit will bring to your remembrance uh, the Lord Jesus Christ and what he has done. In Romans chapter 5, in verses 1 and 2, it says this, Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we have obtained access to, by faith into his grace, in which we stand and which we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Someone once said uh, that justification takes place in the mind of God and not in the nervous systems of the believer. Let me say that again. I want you to remember that one. Justification takes place in the mind of God and not in the nervous systems of the believer. When Jesus died on the cross, the way of justification was made available to you and to me. When we believed that Christ died for our sins, it is at that moment that God reckons us as being justified in his sight. Justification doesn't just sort out 
our sin problem, forgiveness of sins, it grants to you and to me the, the righteousness of Jesus Christ. It forgives our sins and it gives to us the righteousness that is Jesus Christ's. And this is a wonderful truth that brings comfort and peace and hope to our hearts and to our minds this morning. So when God looks at me and he looks at you, he doesn't, look, doesn't see my sin. My sins are covered with the blood of Jesus Christ. More than that, he sees Christ's righteousness clothing me. I am righteous. I am clothed with the righteousness of Jesus Christ. That is why we are adopted into his family. And that is why we can have confidence that we have real peace, lasting peace with God. We are part of his family. We are justified. We are right in his sight. And we are his. And he is with us. Let us just give thanks for the bread and the wine. Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you first of all for our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you that in dying, he paid the penalty for our sins. And in dying, he not only made us uh, forgiven, but he made us right in your eyes. And we thank you for the fact that being right in your eyes means that we're no longer enemies with you, but we're brought close into your family, your sons and daughters in Jesus Christ. And so as we take the bread and the wine this morning, and we take the bread and we break it, we remember that it was there was a cost associated with this wonderful privilege that we have. And that cost was the breaking of the Lord Jesus Christ's body on that tree at Calvary. And when we take the wine, we remember that his whole life was poured out as an offering so that we could go free. We thank you and bless you that we have eternal peace with you and that nothing can ever separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. A very special thanks to Sammy for the not only today but for the last four weeks uh, that he has spoken to us. We have appreciated his ministry, and we do pray for him in his ministry, uh, in, in his uh, his area. Next week we will have um, Robert Hamilton along with us, and Robert will be taking up the subject of a conversation about union and love. John chapter 15, verses 1 to 17. As I mentioned at the beginning of the service, um, we have a very special occasion 
uh, tonight at 6.30 via Zoom. We have the privilege to commission Peter and Debbie and the girls to the work of the gospel in Moldova. Uh, they will be moving with uh, Operation Mobilization into Chesna for language training, uh, where Peter will be taking up uh, the position of uh, short-term uh, teams coordinator. We would like to just uh, alert you to the fact that we will be making a spe special offering um, and as it's online we can uh, open that offering to you this morning and uh, throughout this week um, to help defray some of the costs associated with moving. It is an expensive activity as you I'm sure could, ex could understand and there are three ways uh, that you can uh, do this offering. Uh, you can do it the old-fashioned way and there's nothing wrong with that and that's write a cheque, make it payable to Silver Birch Evangelical Church, send it to uh, Silver Birch Evangelical Church 131 Silver Birch Road, Bangor or you can send it to Ray Anderson directly. You can also, uh, if you have a My Church Suite account, you can go into My Church Suite and you can go into Giving and through the giving module in in your my church suite account you can select to donate uh, to peter and debbie there is a special donation there it is a single donation uh, for the offering today and uh, you, it will follow you through on how to do that quite simply uh, if you prefer you can do it through text and you simply and we'll put, we'll put this up at the end of the service uh, you can t uh, text SEC BT19 give 100, 50, 100 or, or 10, whatever it is you, the Lord lays you on, on your heart to give. So SEC BT19 give 100 pounds to 073 808 307 800. That is 073-803-07-800. You will then get a text back on which will give you a link where you can put in your details and make your donation. We'll also send these links out on the regular email uh, that you should have received last night. Um, and if anybody is, uh, would let, who isn't uh, um, linked in to our church uh, family would like to donate um, they can also contact uh, myself uh, through the website uh, and we will uh, make sure that your donation gets to, to Peter and Debbie too. So we wish you uh, a very pleasant week and thank you again for joining us this morning and uh, if you can We'd love to see you this evening. Goodbye.